This old boy down home walked in a local Cadillac dealership. He was dressed in the uniform of the day, had on his overalls and a pair of tennis shoes, walked up to the salesman and asked a question, how much that our automobile? Salesman said, that automobile to which you have reference, sir, is $28,976.45. Old boy said, well, golly, he said, what'll it do? And the salesman said, what do you mean, what'll it do? And old boy said, I mean, how fast will it run up and down the highway out there? Salesman said, sir, that automobile has a speed of 100 miles an hour. Old boy said, why, shucks, man, I could run a foot race that fast myself. And the salesman said, you could what? And the old boy said, now you heard me, sonny. I said, I could run a foot race faster than that. And the salesman said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you can outrun this Cadillac automobile, I'll just give it to you. It won't cost you a dime. And he said, well, roll it out, sonny. You got yourself a foot race. Well, they got out on the highway, and the old boy stepped out of the car, you know, and took off. And the salesman got the car up to about 45 miles an hour, and he looked out, and the old boy was just in a good, easy, steady trot. Man, he said, this guy can move. He got it up to about 65 miles an hour, and he looked out, and the old boy was just in a good, easy lope. He said, man, I might be in trouble here. He showered down, and he got that thing up to 100 miles an hour, and he looked out the window, and the old boy was gone. He breathed a sigh of relief as he said, well, I knew it. He said, no man alive can keep up with this automobile. No way. And so he turned around to go back down and see where the old boy was. And he drew abreast of him as he was picking himself up out of the ditch, all bruised and battered and bloody and muddy. He was a sight for sore eyes, but he obviously was not hurt. So he decided to kid the old boy a little bit. He said, what happened, partner? Old boy said, let me ask you a question, sonny. He said, did you ever have a blowout on a tennis shoe doing 95 miles an hour? <laughs> well, I'll confess that I've never had a blowout on a tennis shoe even doing five miles an hour. But I do know that there are an awful lot of people who have blowouts in life. We cannot project everything that's going to happen. We cannot anticipate everything that's going to happen. And what we need to do is we need to work towards building a foundation so that regardless of what happens in our business, in our careers or what have you, we will always have that foundation upon which we can rest and start the rebuilding process even if we do have the blowout. In our last session, we identified the qualities that you would want to be present in the most successful person you know, employee or employer. We discovered that you have these qualities. What we're going to do is we're going to look at building your foundation with some of these qualities, which will make such a dramatic difference in your life. <laughs> a few years ago, I was up in Calgary, Canada, and I had a chance to go up on Calgary Tower to the restaurant up there. It's where we were going to have dinner. As we got aboard the elevator, the little recorded message came on giving us the data on the structure. And it said it's 626 feet tall. Now, I can't relate 626 feet up in the air unless I remember that's two football fields and then 26 more feet. The recording said it weighs 13,000 tons. And 7,000 of those tons are underground. Now, you see, with a foundation that's solid, that tower can go way, way up in the air. A foundation is the key. Somebody once said you climb highest only when you stay on the level. We can go to any city, anywhere in the world, and go into the downtown area, and a good engineer can look at the hole in the ground and tell you how tall the building's going to be, how wide the building's going to be, and how long the building is going to be because of the foundation which is there. Now, there's one thing that you'll find to be true. There is no room for hypocrisy at the top. No room. Somebody once described a hypocrite as a person who simply was not himself on Sunday. And I believe there is a, a you know, boy, you had me nervous there for a minute. I thought that was going to slip right past you. Uh, and I believe there is literally some truth in that. 
What I want to do is look at what I believe are the critical foundation stones. And those stones are honesty and carrot and integrity and loyalty and trust or faith and love. With a foundation of those things, we can really do some things that will be amazing in our lives. One of our basic problems in our society today is we're doing a lot of confusing of our young people and of our children. For example, how many times do parents say to their kids, tell the truth. The telephone rings. Tell them I'm not home. Not understanding that when they teach their children to lie for them, they also are teaching their children to lie to them. So many times the parent will say, obey the law. Now the reason I use a fuzz buster is. And what they're saying is, look, kid, if you're going to break the law, don't be a dumb bunny and get caught. Be smart like your old man when you go about breaking the law. Many times we say to them, you know, I'd pay my fair share of the taxes, but the government just wastes the money anyhow. And what they're really doing is justifying the fact that they are stealing and they're teaching dishonesty. A lot of business people do exactly the same thing. A telephone call comes in. The person does not want to talk to the caller. And so they say to the switchboard operator or the secretary, just tell them I'm not here. Well, again, when we teach our people to lie for us, we're also teaching them to lie to us. What do you do when the call comes in and you cannot handle it or do not want to handle it? Many times it is not convenient. I don't suppose I accept one telephone call in a thousand, literally, when it comes in. If I did, I would never be able to get any work done. So Laurie always says to the person calling, he is here. She never, in any circumstances, would misrepresent it. He's here, but he's tied up, he's in conference, he's busy or whatever I'm doing. Can I help you? And most of the time, she can. If she cannot, then she takes the message and I make those return calls at my convenience and that saves an enormous amount of time. Don't ever represent to anybody that you are not there when in reality, you are there. When you look at your foundation. I believe that the foundation upon which we really must build begins with honesty. Now, why is that so important? Very simple. If people like you, they'll listen to you. But if they trust you, they'll do business with you. They will follow you. They will be loyal to you. The second foundation stone I want to talk about is the foundation stone of character. My good friend Calvert Robert puts it this way. Character is the ability to carry out a good resolution long after the excitement of the moment has passed. How many times do we make those New Year's resolutions with all kinds of good intentions? And long about January the 3rd, many of those intentions have gone by the board. I will say again and again and yet again that there are many times when you're going to have to suck it up and tough it out and hang in there. Life's not easy. Life is tough. But when you're tough on yourself, life is going to be infinitely easier on you. John D. Rockefeller said that character, not wealth, power, or position, is of supreme worth. And our cup will truly run over only after we have sealed the character cracks. Only then will that cup really run over. Churchill, who was one of my heroes... I read all of his volumes on the war, all of the speeches, all of the things which he recorded there. And one of the most significant speeches ever made in recorded history was the one where he literally lifted England up by its bootstraps. Not only did he save England, but in all probability, the free world as well. But he never promised them it would be easy. He said it will require blood and sweat and tears. But in the end, England will stand. you got to suck it up, though, a lot of times and tough it out. There isn't a person who will ever listen to these recordings who is employed, who has not on many occasions gone to work when they did not feel like going to work. That opportunity clock sounded off in the morning, and you rolled out of bed, did a little halo adjustment, and held a small pity party, 
because you really did not feel like going to work. I mean, you had a splitting headache, but you got a project that you're working on, and so I'm committed to do it, and I got to do it. You finally fight your way in, get a cup of coffee, and decide maybe that you're going to live and what have you. But you really are feeling so proud of yourself, and you take considerable pride in the fact that you're so humble about the whole thing. You go down there feeling absolutely miserable, and then you get involved in the project, and two hours later, you forgot you ever had a bad feeling in your life. You're wrapped up in it. Isn't that true? Hasn't that happened to you a lot of times? But you see, earlier you identified the qualities of success. You said they're dependable. They accept responsibility. They are prompt. They are there. They do the things they're supposed to do. If people cannot depend on you, I don't care how talented you are, you're going to have trouble in life, very definitely. The third foundation stone is integrity, which basically means basic wholeness. In the Korean War, the highest-ranking prisoner of war was General Dean. When General Dean was captured, they used some tremendous, excruciating torture methods, brainwashing, cold, heat, starving. They used the whole routine. They were daily threatened with their very lives. At one time, the communists said to him, We're going to execute you tomorrow. You can write one final note home, 25 words or less. This was not one of those to win $5,000 or $50,000. This was his last correspondence with his family. I don't know what the other words were, but he wound his message up with these words. Tell Skip, that's their son, the word is integrity. Integrity makes a difference. Ken Blanchard wrote an article in Executive Excellence. It was published in December of 1987. And he reports on a study done by the Ethics Resource Center where they did a composite of the Dow Jones for the last 30 years. And they discovered that had you invested $30,000 in the Dow 30 years ago, that you would today have $134,000. But then they did a study of the 21 companies on the Dow Jones who have set high ethical standards, and they have one basic standard which they all maintain, and that is their written, published company statement stated that their purpose, their function, was to serve the public with high ethics Had you invested your $30,000 in those 21 companies, you would have well over $1 million, over nine times as much. See, folks, it's true. You can have everything in life you want if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. Mark Paston, the director of the Center for Ethics at Arizona State University, did a study of the companies who, for the last 100 years, have consistently paid dividends. And of the companies which have consistently paid dividends, every one of them had high ethical standards and recognized that the customer was the reason they were in business. Mortimer Feinberg put it this way in his book, Corporate Bigamy. He did an interview of 100 top corporate executives, men and women who were the CEOs of the Fortune 500 companies. He asked them the question, what is necessary to go to the top and stay there? They answered, you've got to build your career on honesty and character and integrity, and they threw in the word motivation. Then they summed it up by saying, anybody who thinks they can go to the top and stay there who's not honest is dumb. Now, that's about as strong as it can get. Tom Peters put it this way, integrity has always determined the difference between winners and losers. And I believe that is extremely important. The next foundation stone I want to talk about is trust or faith. I had the privilege of having access to a major study done by the Forum Corporation out of Boston, Massachusetts. 
They did a study of 341 salespeople. 173 of them were super successful salespeople. 168 of them were moderately successful salespeople. All of them had been selling at least five years, meaning that the rookie factor is not going to play a part. Now, these salespeople sold everything from insurance and banking to commercial and industrial and residential real estate, industrial supplies. They had a variety of products. They represented 11 different companies. They did this analysis and discovered that the super successful and the moderately successful all had basically the same experience and the same skills. Each knew how to get prospects. Each knew how to get appointments. Each knew how to make the presentation. Each knew how to handle objections. Each knew how to close the sale. The major difference between the two was one word. The word was trust. Here's what they found out. People don't buy based on what you tell them. People don't buy based on what you show them. People do buy based on what you tell them and show them which they believe. The word is trust. Now, you see, that applies in the family equally as well. Your children buy your ideas and concepts based on what you tell them and show them which they believe. Your employees in your company... If you want to have them loyal to you and growing with you, they will buy your ideas and do their best job based on what you tell them and show them which they believe. Now, the question is, who are they going to believe? History proves conclusive they're going to believe the good guys and the good gals. They're going to believe the people who have the right qualities for success. And what we're talking about here is a foundation. If you look at it from a faith point of view, a lot of people are so confused about faith. I cannot tell you the number of times I've had people say, well, now, I don't believe things that I don't understand. And yet, they flip the switch on the wall and the lights come on and they have no more idea than a goat how that light got up there. But that doesn't keep them from enjoying uh, the electricity. I have no idea how a black cow can eat green grass, give white milk and red meat and yellow butter. I don't understand all of those things. But that doesn't keep me from enjoying the products. Now, we all have a lot of faith. We drive a thousand miles, pull into a strange service station and say, fill it up. Our entire mobility is dependent on it being gasoline and not buttermilk. And yet with complete faith, we say, fill it up. We need to understand that we don't have to understand everything in order to enjoy the benefits. Now, why do we mention faith in here? It's very, very simple. The Brookings Institute, which is a liberal, independent research organization released a 389-page report. And in this report, they said, the stability and future strength of American democracy depend on the underpinnings of religion. Without it, democracy lacks essential moral support to sustain it. Representative government depends for its health on values that over the not-so-long run must come from religion. I was rather intrigued to learn about two years ago that everybody believes in God. Now, before you jump more than three feet, hear me out. I knew that some people had said they didn't believe. I heard about this company. And because sometimes you hear things and it sounds so good, you want to believe it that you just parrot what you heard without checking it. But this was so important, I got on the phone I called the chairman of the board, and fortunately, I was able to speak with him. Here's what I'd heard, that his company, which has 150 outlets all over America, uses a polygraph test before they ever hire anybody. They've been doing it for a number of years. There are many thousands of people involved. And one of the questions they always ask is, do you believe there is a God? Put the that big thing.